Welcome River of Life Online. I am so excited to worship Jesus with you all today and to get in the Word of God, be that in your book, the Bible, or on your phone in the Bible. Get it ready, you guys. We are going to be reading the Bible. It's one of the things I love about our church is yeah. we're about the Word of God, the whole Word of God, uncompromised. One of our values, go check them out at our website. We'll put the link in the chat right now. So I want to welcome our guest, our friend, a family member, a missionary that we support, a life group leader. You've got a lot of really cool titles. Disciple maker, that's the best one, yeah. right? Yes. Daughter of God, Amen. I could keep going. But welcome <laughs> Carol Turner online, you guys. Hey, it's great to be here this morning. Thanks for having me, Alex. But in case you guys don't know, we have over 20 life groups launching on the first week of February. And we have life groups for women, life groups for men, life groups for married people, life groups for Bible studies and prayer activities. We even have a group that goes out walking, right? And so there are all sorts of groups that help you connect with one another, grow in your relationship with God. They all serve to help us grow spiritually. And you're leading one called Freedom for Women, right? Right. Okay, tell us a little bit about Freedom. What is that? So I love Freedom. I just got done doing that with Lisa Harris's past time. And I am so excited about leading Alex. It is a study for anyone, whether you've been a Christian for a day or a Christian for 20 years. It's a great way to lay a foundation, to build upon one, or to solidify one. And it's just as, it's Christ came to set us free. Yeah. And it it's a, just walks you through freedom. Totally. I, I heard a lot of awesome testimonies from the men and women who attended it this last yeah. semester. And something that we hope to continue to do every semester. And I believe the, the, the nature of the content and the teachings, it's so foundational yeah. as far it as is. like you gave your life to Jesus now what yeah. what does that mean who yeah. am I and yeah. God right and how do you work through some of the stuff that you're carrying so yeah. you can let go of that baggage and we all have stuff that oh, we yeah. need to let go of I'm still in the process of letting go right <laughs> so I want to encourage you yeah um, if, if you've never done the freedom class um, jump in there's so much to learn about who we are in Christ mm -hmm. and when we learn that and we get set free yeah. and we learn about forgiveness it is so powerful right yeah. and so that's what you lead in the mornings mm -hmm. um, I know Lisa Harris she's leading another one in the evenings yeah. and of course we have others other women's groups we have other men groups mm -hmm. so go online right now rolva.org forward slash life groups check out all the groups that we have to offer there are so many good ones like if you're in the Fredericksburg area or if you're in Massachusetts or Pennsylvania or California, wherever you're viewing from, we have life groups that are online yeah. and in person and, and be able to pray for one another and care for one another. And so sounds like you as well benefited from getting connected oh, to the church through groups. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I just invite you to too as well. You are a missionary. Yeah. Right. So yeah. give us a sound bite of like, what is E3 and tell us all about it. Okay. So E3 Kids is, we equip, empower, and educate kids. So we equip the schools, we empower the community, and we educate kids that would never, ever be able to have an education outside of help. And so we're all about empowering people um, in many different areas, so. Okay, how long have you been doing this? So for 11 years, God gave me a calling about 12 years ago to Kenya, and okay. um, it's expanded out into other areas, but okay. Kenya is my heart and my passion and my calling. Wow. So, so we have partnered with um, people we believe about empowering indigenous missionaries. We want to um, come alongside them and support them and encourage them. So we started with Nagawa Grace Mzira in Kenya at their school. We've equipped the school with libraries, with chem labs, with uh, buildings, uh, with classrooms, with desks, I mean, you name it. Um, it's anything that is around school, curriculum, everything. But then we also want to empower the community because the communities in which we work in are just devastatingly poor. There is, um, there's nothing like it here in the United States. And the slums in which we work in, um, we want to empower the pastors there. And so we've been empowering pastors to minister to the people and a lot of people this year have come to Christ um, because of the lockdowns and the hardship and so yeah. it's just amazing and so then we want to educate those kids in those slum areas that would never be able to have an education all the way through high school yeah. and then as we get sponsors for college we do that too and we have now seen after 11 years um, kids graduate college mm -hmm. and are get productive citizens yeah. and they would have never been able to achieve the goals in which they uh, achieved and so we are just so excited that people such as River of Life and and um, other um, come alongside us that empowers us to be able to uh, just walk out the calling God has given us to empower yeah. people in McIndana, Kenya. No, that's awesome. I love it. I love the vision. Um, I love that, that you have a calling, and I believe everybody, you listening right here, like yeah. you have a calling in your life. 
Um, I don't know whether it's to just be a part of discipling the people right there where you're at in your hometown. Um, maybe it could just be pursuing one person, helping them with their walk with God, or maybe it's an assignment like you had in a whole other country to pour into people. But um, just take the next step, right? And, Obedience and be, and be, is all yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And hey, if, if you want to learn. If I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> but at the end of the day, we all need Jesus Amen. and his grace to do what That's he's right. called us to do, right. right? So how do we learn more about your ministry? So you can go to e3kids.com and look at us on the internet. Yeah. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to empower people here to um, empower programs there. And we've done a lot of that. And I'd love to talk to you more about it. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing about the ministry that God has called you to. One of our missionaries at River of Life, you guys. And we plan to highlight more of our missionaries. So look out. It's going to be good. I'm excited to share with you guys more about the 70-something missionaries that we support through River of Life, through your giving. So let's get ready for worship. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. And Father, we thank you for everything, God. We thank you for the opportunity to make your name known among the nations. And we pray right now, Lord God, that your name would be lifted high, would be the greatest name, and that all of our attention would be on you as we go to worship right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, River of Life. What an awesome time to praise the Lord. Let's lift his name up together, church. He's worthy this morning. Come on.
so good. You're so good. You're so worthy.
supernatural love, supernatural grace, supernatural strength. God, your blood is powerful and we thank you for that. Holy Spirit, continue, continue to just draw us into who you are this morning. Bring us closer to you, Jesus, as we worship. Come move over us, God. Fill our hearts to There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is up It's in your presence, Lord Your grace. 
is going to overwhelm me. Let it be your glory. Let it be your holiness. Let it be your beauty, your presence, your grace. Let it be you, Jesus. I submit all to you. I surrender all to you right now, God. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you move in my heart. Make that your prayer. Overwhelm our hearts this morning, Jesus. We love you. We honor you. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to continue right now our worship with our giving, and I want to introduce to you one of our missionaries that we support, Carol Turner, as she shares just our heart around giving and why we do this as a church. Well, thanks, Alex. You know, giving is a, a privilege and an awesome opportunity for us to not only just empower this church here, but to empower churches around the world. E3Kids has really been a recipient of your generous generosity and your giving. And one, one of the things that we're able to do because church is so into our ministry is that we're able to empower pastors that are reaching literally hundreds of people for Christ. Um, this past year was a rough year. And when you give and you give sacrificially, God takes that and boy, does he ever multiply it and he uses it. And so I just want to thank River Life for being so generous in giving to, uh, to the church because the church then has just reached so many. So thank you for giving a lot. We thank you for your sacrificial giving and we look forward to seeing what God has to do in this next 2021. It's awesome, that's beautiful. We get to be a part of that as do many others who are sewing yeah, in. Amazing. And so we're so grateful um, for what you guys do in the field and what so many others as well are doing out there on the field to bless the nations. 
church. Um, as always, like whatever God leads you to give, we just want to encourage you to give cheerfully and to give out of the abundance of your heart. Right. There's no there's no external pressure. No. Um, it's just about you, your relationship with God and what God has laid there. And so however you feel led to give, there's different ways you can do that. You can give online, you can give by text, you can mail a check, um, whatever works best for you. And so just want to end that with saying that we're so grateful. Thank you for your giving, for your generosity. You. Let's check out the 411. Good morning, River of Life. Happy Sunday. It is so good to be here with you guys this morning. If you are new, thank you for joining us. It's good to have you. We're glad that you joined us on Sunday. You could be anywhere else, but you are here and we, we are thankful for you. I have a question for you, for the people. What is, everybody's got their resolution. You know, new year, new me. I just have one question. What is your spiritual resolution? Let's go a little deeper this year in 2021. What's your spiritual resolution? What's God speaking to you? What does he want you to do this year to take your relationship with him to the next level? We are in day 14 of our fast, so I'm hoping you got some answers for me. Put them in the chat. And if you're here in the house, talk amongst yourselves. Avoid the aisle six feet. Let's just maintain some of that social distancing. Unless you brush your teeth and you can give me a hug. I'm just saying, life groups are coming back the first week in February. We are so excited to do life with you again. And we want to highlight a couple of groups for you this morning. All right, ladies, we have just a plethora of life groups for you. There are five different life groups just for women morning, evening. I mean, the options are really just endless. Therefore, your excuses are limited. I know we got a lot going on, ladies. I know, I know, I feel you. I'm a mom, I work, I understand, I understand you. But we gotta get into these life groups, ladies. I'm sorry, men, men. We also have multiple life groups for you too. There are four different life groups for men. Same parameters as the women, morning, evening, devotionals, Bible studies. Pick one. They're yours for the taking. And now that you have all of the information, men, women, sign up, sign up, sign up for the life group. Our annual business meeting is coming up in February. And in most cases, I would say mind your business, but in this case, this is your business. So we're gonna need all of you to be there, write it on your calendar. We got business to attend to. And before our business meeting, we have nominations to make for our board, which means we got ballots and we got buckets, y'all. There are ballots in the foyer, nominate your person that you want to sit on the board to represent you at River of Life and put your ballot in the bucket. Put your ballot in the bucket. <laughs> we are entering week four of our series, We Will Not Fail. Y'all, I'm feeling very empowered by the Holy Spirit knowing that we cannot fail with him on our side. Pastor Dale, learn us. Well, good morning, River of Life. It is great to be with you. Believe it or not, we are halfway through our 21 days of prayer and fasting. It has been amazing for me. If you were able to be with us in person or online last Wednesday, all I can say is, wow, I just got done talking to Tawan and, and the Lord just really uplifted him and I felt the same thing and what an amazing time. Next Wednesday, don't forget, if you can meet with us online or in person, it'll be our final prayer night together corporately. And you know what? There's something about corporate prayer that strengthens our heart, that uplifts our spirit and Boy, we are all in. God is moving us. He is shaping us. He is developing us. And because of that, we are not going to fear. And we are going to succeed in all that we do. You know, I want to start this morning off with a question. And maybe you can put it in the chat. You may have some time to think about it before I give you what the Bible says as an answer. But maybe you can type as fast as you can. If you could, and here's the question, if you could ask Christ one 
question and you knew he was going to give you the answer, what would it be? Can you think, wow, if he, if, if, if Jesus was right with you and he said, you know what, Dale, ask me anything, ask me anything, and I am going to give you the answer immediately, what would it be? Here's an interesting note. When the disciples had that opportunity, they were with Christ. And you know what they asked him? Here it is. How should we pray? That's the question they asked. And Jesus answered it and he said, I want you to pray like this. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13, and that's where we have been these last several weeks in going over the Lord's prayer. Jesus says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus gives them this model prayer because the Lord craves, think of this, the Lord craves relationship with us. Prayer is wholehearted interaction with God. It's real, it's authentic, it's alive, there's power in it, there is an element of passion that is involved because we are meeting up with somebody we know loves us unconditionally. We know that that person, God, is for us, not against us. And church, prayer is, is, is not walking, if you can picture this image, it's not walking into a grocery store and looking at all the things that are around you and say, I want this, I think I'll take this, I want, I want this and this and this and this. And, and the sooner I get this checked out and, and I receive it, the better, amen. That's, that's, that's not a picture of prayer. Prayer begins with God. Prayer begins with God and his glory. He starts off and says, pray like this. Our Father. How great is that? How great is that? Jesus Christ made a way for you and I to be children of God through the cross, through the resurrection. Because of that, we desire to go to him and he becomes, or I should say, he now is our priority. That is the priority of prayer, the relationship with God. He is our father. He is for us. He loves us. And then he moves into the praise of prayer and says, hallowed be thy name. And we have looked over both of these, these statements in the last several weeks. He is nothing. He's holy. He is nothing like anything or anybody we could imagine. He is out of this world. He is unique. He is God. He is our Father. He is holy. And there is this adoration to who He is. There's an honor to His name, to what He does. And then we saw last week the plan of prayer when He says, Pray like this. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's not about my agenda, Lord. I want to line up with what you want. Listen, when, when we seek his presence, when we surrender to his leading in our lives, when we acknowledge that relationship, his power will saturate our hearts and our prayers will be effective. And that's why Jesus said in, in, in Matthew 6, as he sums it up, but seek first the kingdom, seek first my righteousness and all things will be added unto you. Listen, prayer that doesn't start by seeking God is a waste of time. You're like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Well, James kind of gives us that in a nutshell, when he says in chapter four and verse three, you ask and do not receive. Watch this. 
because you ask wrongly. Isn't that interesting? He's saying, you know, you, you don't know. And, and this is what the Lord is trying to help us and teach us. And if you remember, as we looked at the book of James, the, the overarching theme of that book was it's time to grow up. God wants us to grow in him. He wants us to develop. And he says, listen, you're coming to me wrongly with with wrong motives you don't know how to ask you don't know how to approach me how to approach the throne of grace remember we are approaching grace we're not coming in with and worrying about condemnation the bible says there's no condemnation for those that are in christ jesus there's an attitude there's a way we come to him The prayer that is not answered is the prayer that approaches God in the wrong way. That's why this is so, so very important. He says, you don't, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it, watch this, on your own passions. And we're going to develop that last part in just a minute. But a lot of us never know the victory in our prayer life we never know the joy the power we don't realize the the presence of God to the degree he wants to give because we don't know how to pray we we've never looked at it in the word of God we've never been taught we've never been mentored we never been discipled and that's why those that were closest to Jesus when he asked what would you like what do you want me to teach you and they said listen we really want to know how to pray because we know that is the center from which everything else that you do comes from so Jesus has given us a priceless gift of encouragement, instructing us how to approach him, how to build this relationship, how to appreciate and and honor the grace that he has given us because of what he did for us on the cross. And today we move into the provision of prayer in verse 11, where Jesus says, give us this day our daily bread. Pray like this. Give us this day our daily bread. I want you to notice in that it says us and our. It does not say give me this day my daily bread. So the idea here is moving beyond my own needs, beyond your own needs. The focus in verse 11 is what? Corporate. It's corporate. So so I pray for Bob and he prays for me. And our needs then are both met. His attitude is that towards me. My attitude is that towards him. And Jesus says, I want you to move away from a self-centeredness that can easily capture you. It can easily allow your mentality and my mentality have this speed type of desire, this grocery store mentality of picking and choosing what we want and getting out of there as fast as we can with as much as we can. So there's this moving away from self and we don't want to be captured into a dimension of wrong passion, wrong attitude, wrong motive, a a superficial relationship, if you will, with God. Why? Because it moves us away from his presence. It moves us away from hearing his will. It moves us away from getting the answer that he wants to give us. You say, well, Dale, can, can I pray for my own needs? Are you saying I can't pray for my own needs? No, I'm not saying that. But if that is the sum total of our praying, then we are losing so much. And, and this certainly is teaching us that we can ask. We can ask God. 
when it comes to petitioning of God? And what is it that we should pray for? How is it that we should pray? I want us to look at at, at, at the scriptures, because even in the, the Old Testament, you can go to Daniel chapter 9, and we even see there where Daniel is first coming to God, and he is praying for others. He's praying for the nation. It's not just about himself. It's not just about God, get me out of captivity. Why am I here? Why did this happen to me? Why did you, why did you allow the, the, the enemy to pull me away from my mom and dad and my family and, and, and here I am as a slave. You read Daniel and you read especially chapter 9 and you see this prayer for others and it's powerful. But we're going to confine our thinking today to the New Testament and this points to some important considerations when it comes to praying the will of God in our own lives and the lives of others. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16, I want you to see how, how he prays, how Paul prays. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Before he prays for himself, before he prays for his family, there's this attitude of gratitude and there's power in this. Paul comes to God and says, thank you for the people that you have put in my life. I want you to notice, before he prays for them, he thanks God for them. I mean, that's just amazing. And when we have an attitude of gratitude, it repositions our heart and it shifts our perspective. It begins to change our entire mindset when it comes to prayer and it strengthens our relationship with the Lord. Look at it in verse 17 through 20, and then we're going to break that up, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you how, how this prayer is so effective. He says in verse 17, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? Wow. I mean, verse 17, if you would just pray that for me every day, you would bless me immensely. Look at that. To say, Lord, I pray that you give Dale... Lord, I just pray that you give my pastor a spirit of wisdom. Lord, I pray that you give him a, a, a understanding, a revelation of who you are every day. Guide him, protect him. I mean, that is amazing. And then in verse 18 to say, Lord, I pray that you help him grow in his understanding of who you are and what you have done for him. I mean, the more we know him, church, the more we know God, the more we adore him, the stronger we are. And look how he prays in verse 19. He says this, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him on the right hand in heavenly places. That is powerful. He's saying, listen, as my knowledge of God grows, so will my devotion to him. In verse 19, pray again, just pray 16 through 20 for me every single day and I'll pray it for you. Look at verse 19 to say, Lord, I pray that Dale understands how great your power is. God, when he's weak, when he's distraught, when he's depressed, God, open his heart, let him realize, remind him, let him understand how great your power is. Because when I understand how great his power is, when you understand how great his power is, we will begin to realize there is no problem that we can't solve because God is by our side. We will not be shaken. We are in his presence. And church, that is very, 
very encouraging. Even when it seems all is lost, his power is there. God, I pray that you help us understand how great your power is. That's what Paul is praying for people before he even comes and prays for his own needs. In Ephesians 3, 14, you see this again. He says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Wow, that is awesome. I mean, as we walk through these prayers on provision, we don't see a lot of prayers about, about physical healing, about healing amp. Aunt Mary's arthritis or, or Uncle Max's heart condition. Uh, and I'm not saying that we can't pray for those needs because we see that also in the word of God. But when we take a look at what people in scripture are praying about the majority of the time, their focus is internal. That is their main focus. That is what comes first. It is eternal. In reality, the issues of life flow from the inside out. Is that not true? So if we can get the inside right, the outside is just going to naturally be there. We are going to have the faith. We are going to have the courage. As, as we saw the disciples do when they said, get up and walk. You were blind, but I want you, but now you're going to see in the name of Jesus Christ. But internally, look at Proverbs 4.23. Keep your heart. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. We are conquerors over every problem when our heart is strong in the Lord. We will either walk in grace through it or soar in victory over it. That is the promise of the Father. Be strong in faith, walking in a knowledge of God, having our internal priorities right will give us the tools to take care of all our external needs, all of our external needs. But if our prayer life is all about external and my heart is never strengthened in God and your heart is never strengthened in, in God and renewed and reset, we go through life stumbling from problem to problem to problem, from anxiety to anxiety, from fear to fear to fear, depending on the situation. And Paul understands this. That's why it is so important that he begins to pray for others. He begins to start inside out. And he says to the church in Ephesians 3, 17, so that Christ may dwell in your heart I'm praying that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the Christians, with all the churches, what is the length and height and depth and, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. That is, that, that is amazing. What a prayer. The more I know how much Christ loves me, the more confident I will be in every situation, every circumstance that I or you face. If we knew how much God loved us, if we knew how much God loved us, we would never worry about another thing for the rest of our lives. And that is something where I am trying during this 21 days of prayer and fasting. I am, I am, I am asking God, God, help me to get there. Lord, I want to get there. I don't want to be full of worry. I don't want to be full of anxiety. I don't want to operate in fear. I want to lean on your understanding. And so Paul understands we are all, we are all struggling at times with our emotions, but our emotions cannot 
dominate and lead our convictions. Our convictions must dominate and lead our emotions. And so that is why this prayer of provision is so important. Give us this day our daily bread. Watch this in Philippians chapter one and verse three as Paul continues to pray for others. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. He says in verse nine of that same chapter, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God what a prayer we pray that for each other in fact I just prayed that for, for my mother. And so you think, think of this. I, I say, you know what, Lord, I, I, I pray that my mother, I pray that Ruth will, will walk in purity. God, that you give her purity of heart. God, that you give her knowledge, that you give her discernment. Lord, that, 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 that when she comes to you, she is going to want everything that is excellent. And, and Lord, as she comes to you and her heart is open, you are going to give her the, the, the fruit and the righteousness and you're going to allow her to develop and give her full capacity of your character and let her walk in that. Let her be a light. Let her be a testimony. God, 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 help her that, that her love may abound more and more and more where people see her. And when they see her and listen to her, they will come to know Jesus Christ. They are going to see something. They're going to be drawn by something. And God, that love is going to just ooze out of her because it's you. Can you imagine praying that for people, praying that over and over and over again? What a blessing that is, how powerful that is. How that, it just, just in praying that right now, it just, it just makes you full of joy because you're taking self out and you're, you're putting self behind and you're praying for others. Give us this day our daily bread. Sometimes we have to say no to good things so we can say and do the best things. We see in Colossians chapter one and verse three, he says, we also thank God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. He says in that same chapter in verse nine, and so from the day we heard, Paul says, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be, watch this, filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in the manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience and joy, given thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the church in, in his light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Listen, I could have have the worst physical need you can think of, but if you pray for me that I might be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, that physical need isn't going to last long. It is not going to hinder me. It won't hinder you because as the power of God strengthens us, we will overcome. We will be overcomers. What a prayer. What a prayer. I'm gonna be selfish and say pray that for me as well. And I'll pray that for you in the book of Colossians chapter one. I mean, it's, it's, it's so powerful. Do you see? see it? Do you see the pattern? Do you see how, how Paul is able to say, I have learned to become content in all things. How does he get there? He gets there through his prayer life. He gets there through understanding how God told the church how to pray. This is how you pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
You see, I think a problem is we are like the doctor who only treats symptoms in our praying instead of being like the surgeon and going to the root of the situation. So much of our prayer life is lacking because we stay on the surface. We stay so focused on ourselves in the way we pray. Listen, life is lived from the inside out. The spiritual realities of life far surpass the physical realities of life. And we have to understand that. And in 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 11, Paul says, to this end, we always pray for you. What are you praying? That our God may make you worthy of his calling. That we walk in the character of God, in the good times, in the hard times. We, we put others before ourselves instead of cutting people down. We are building them up through prayer. And, and, and listen, it's so important because when we don't do that, then we have other people watching us. And you know what they are saying? Oh my word. And they call themselves Christians. And this is how they act. This is the things they say. This is the temperature of their attitude. And that's why Paul says, listen, to this end, here's what we're praying, that God may make you worthy of your calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. Wow, that prayer really covers everything. But, but it starts on the inside. Matthew 6, 25 Jesus says, and that's, this is why he says, I, I want to tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat or drink, your, nor your body or what you'll put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? The answer is yes. And which of you, being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of your life? The answer is you can't. Wow. So listen, daily bread isn't our food. It's not our clothing. It's not about our stuff. It's not about us. Daily bread are the very scriptures we have been reading today. What we have been talking about. Daily bread is to have the power, the strength of God, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit operating in our life to the degree that we will be strong and mighty in the Lord and in his power, seeking after him, being like him. And without that, we are weak. Without that, we are starving. We are anemic. No matter how much food you have on the table, no no matter how big your wardrobe is, no matter how great and awesome your house is and your property is, no matter how big your bank account is, give us this day our daily bread. That is the wealth of our warfare. That is where our strength comes from. That is how Jesus is teaching us how to pray. God give us each day the things we have to have for life from the inside out. What what do we have to have for life? Well, we've been saying it today. An increasing knowledge of him. An increasing knowledge empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That is the daily bread for life. Not our meals. God has already promised to do that. But he says in Matthew 6, 33 again, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the inside, and then all things will be added unto you the outside. 
In John 16, 23, it says, in that day, you will ask nothing of me. Watch this. Truly, truly, I say, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. In other words, you're, 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 you're not coming and seeking me. You're not listening to what I said in Matthew 6.33 when I said to seek first me. Seek first the kingdom. Our Father. Our Father. I want relationship. Who are in heaven. I want, I want to suppress my will and I want your will. I, I, I want to serve you. I want to acknowledge you and your righteousness and your character. And, and he says, until now, you have not asked. You have not sought after me. But if you ask, you will receive, watch this, that your joy. Where does joy come from? From the things on the outside or the things on the inside? It's the things on the inside, right? Right? Joy is supernatural. Joy is spiritual. You can't manufacture that. God gives us that. Because while I'm asking for you, and this is what he's trying to say here, while I'm asking for you to be strengthened, to be empowered, to have knowledge and wisdom, you are asking God that for me. And, and, and as I ask, and I put myself aside and I focus on him and focus on others, give us this day our daily bread, then what happens is what I sow, I reap. And what you sow, you reap. And what I pray for you in your life, God will do in my life. And we can say amen and amen and amen. In other words, God, let it be so. Let your church, let your people grow from the inside out. Do you see it? Do you see it? Give us this day our daily bread. I mean, it is amazing. When we understand this, when we grasp this, and that's why the disciples said when they could have asked him anything and they wanted an answer, they knew the foundation of it all came through relationship with God, with prayer. And they said, teach us how to pray. God said, okay. Pray. Pray like this. Well, you may or may not know that our theme verse for the year is Psalm 16:8. And I want to end this time in just praying this for you. And I want you to, to, to pray this for me. It says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not be shaken. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for every single person watching right now. God, we so greatly appreciate your love for us and what you have done for us. You are an amazing God. You are a great God. Lord, open our hearts. Lord, I pray for every single person, wherever they are at, whatever is going on in their life. God, give them the strength. Give them the power. Give them the endurance to set their hearts before you every day, before anything else. Because you want to fill it. You want to strengthen them. You want to guide them. And Lord, I, I pray that they will remember that you are their right hand. You are the person that they need to go to first. Lord, as your word says to come after you, to seek first your character, your righteousness, who you are. Lord, every single person watching, I pray, dear God, that you remind them that they must go to you first because when they do, you are going to give them an assurance. You are going to give them wisdom. You are going to give them a power, insight, passion. You are going to give them knowledge that goes beyond their understanding. You're going to give them a peace that goes beyond their understanding. And Lord, I pray in your name that no matter, Lord, what takes place, they will not be shaken because they are going before you. They are trusting you. They are encouraged by you. And Lord, your Holy Spirit is empowering them every day. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen. If you're listening today 
and you heard that prayer and you said, you know, man, I've never looked at this relationship thing with Christ. I, all, I always thought it was more a ritual or something that people did because they didn't know what else to do and they had to have this crutch and it's, it's God. It's just not true. God loves you. He died on the cross for you. The Bible says, for he so loved you that he gave his only son and that if you would believe in him, that you will spend eternity with him. And not only that, he begins to transform our lives immediately on this earth because he wants the best for us. Today, if you want to give your heart to Jesus Christ, it's, 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 it's so simple. But then you know what? people around you and, and if we can be of any help we want to come alongside of you encourage you people that are here to pray for you but the bible just says when we are, have that authentic desire to accept him to say you know what i believe that jesus christ is the son of god that he died on the cross for me i'm going to give my life to him the bible says immediately we are transformed we are we are saved what he did on the cross and what he did through the resurrection gives us new life. No matter what our background is, how awesome is this act? You could text this number on the screen and we want, to, we want to pray with you. We want to encourage you. We want to come alongside of you. And then if you have accepted Christ already, listen, I want to encourage you to pray for others. Pray for others. Put God at the top and as we learned and as we saw today, praying for other people's needs. And the Bible says they are praying for you. And all of a sudden, this, this miraculous transformation takes place. And when we take care of the inside, you know what? God's got to take care of everything on the outside. We, we love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen. All right, you guys, what a great message on the Word of God. Um, I, I just want to encourage you, find a way that works best for you, where you're not distracted. If that is reading the Bible on your phone, if that is being old school, which I am still very much old school, a fan of it, like have, have a good, you know, leatherback, paperback Bible that you get into, but whatever works best for you, where you are actually going to be able to take that intentional time to be with God and to get in Scripture, do it. There is a quote that I want to share. My man, Tony Nunez, who is our youth pastor, he has it actually written in his Bible, and it says that either uh, this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. Ooh, that's a good so, one. I want to leave that with you guys this morning as we talk about the Word of God and making that a daily practice to consume it. Hey, if you haven't connected with River Life, or you're new to us, please get in touch with us. We would love to connect with you. We know this is a hard time where we're all separated. We really need to feel connected. So give a shout out to us. Let us shout back to you. Absolutely, you guys. Here's the best way to do that. Send us a text right now to connect now to 94090 and myself or a team member will call you this week just to say hi talk to you over the phone learn about your story and what god is doing and even pray with you right then and there also don't forget to check out all of our life groups yeah. there's so many good Sign ones coming up. up in february we love you church we're signing off have a great day